Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So, um, so I want to talk about two aspects of prayer that we will see as we lift up the Lord. They, I want to talk about the appeal and the cry. At our last meeting uh, a few weeks ago, and, and please, I apologize for my voice. I've been sick for two weeks with bronchitis and I've canceled many meetings and I was determined that I would not cancel this meeting because the enemy's not going to have his way. So pray for me. <laughs> So at our last meeting, I spoke about needing a fresh revelation of the magnified Lord, that he is a holy God who is mighty in power. I shared that in the Bible, the Lord is called by many names, such as Yahweh Shalom, which is God or peace, or Yahweh Rapha, our healer. However, the name that he has chosen to use nearly 10 times more than every other name combined, used more than 244 times, is Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, or the Lord of the armies of heaven or, the, or heaven's armies. That's how it's translated in the New Living Translation. <clears throat> But um, Lord there is actually the Tetragrammaton um, Yahweh. So it's Yahweh Sabaoth. Isaiah said, and I'm going to read quite a few scriptures because I want in the scriptures for you to just begin to see this mighty warrior God that we serve. Isaiah said in Isaiah 6, 5, and I've been speaking a lot about this passage because God just keeps bringing it to me. I feel where this is where we're at. Isaiah said, so I said, woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king the Lord of heaven's armies. So I want us to be able to say that tonight. Our eyes have seen the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. Second King 1931 says, for out of Jerusalem shall go a remnant and those who escape from Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of heaven's armies will do this. The word zeal there is jealousy. God is jealous over what and who belongs to him. And that's us. It's the same word used in Psalms, um, Psalms of Solomon 8, 6, where he says, set me as a seal upon your heart, for love is as strong as death. Jealousy, same word, jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are flames of fire. So God is jealous for those who belong to him, his bride. Isaiah 2.12 says, For the day of the Lord of heaven's armies shall come upon everything that is proud and lofty, upon everything lifted up, and it shall be brought low. So believe me and believe the word, that day will come and it is soon. First Samuel 17, 45 says, then David said to the Philistines, you come with me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of Yahweh Sabaoth, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. That name carries great power for breakthrough. And David understood that. He went after Goliath knowing who that God, the Lord Sabaoth was, who he was to him. David had experienced him in, in, um, in, in the, while he was a shepherd, you know, coming against the bears and the lions. Isaiah 54, 5 says, for your maker is your husband. The Lord Sabaoth is his name. And your redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. So as his bride, you have favor. You belong to him. 
He is jealous for you. This mighty warrior king is in love with you, jealous for you, and fighting for you. <clears throat> <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> In um, the, the worship that we were just singing, you know, I, I wanted to play that because, you know, it talks about who is this king? Who is this mighty warrior dressed in battle? You know, and I have this whole vision of, of the Lord now dressed in armor, mighty, like a giant over all things, over all the earth, mighty in battle, dressed for battle. That's who he is now to us. So Psalms 24, 8, again, says, Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates. Lift up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? Who is he? The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the King of Glory. He is Lord Sabaoth. Second Samuel 6, 2, and David arose and went with all the people <clears throat> to bring up from there the ark of God, whose name is called by the name, that's interesting language, the way it says in the scripture, I'll read it again to bring up from there the ark of God, whose name is called by the name, the Lord Sabaoth, who dwells between the cherubim. And F.B. Meyer, who, uh, who wrote um, about this scripture said, the sacredness of the ark of the covenant is in its association with Yahweh Sabaoth the Lord of heaven's armies. It was his, his seat and it was his throne because the verse says, who dwell between the cherubim. So this Lord Sabaoth dwells on the Ark of the Covenant in our covenant with him. The Lord Sabaoth obviously, obviously wants us to understand that his name is mighty and that he is a great warrior king of armies. The Lord Sabaoth is the mighty military commander that Joshua encountered and is the revelation of himself that he most frequently expresses in the Bible. As I said, way over 244 times. His power and his might are transcendent beyond anything that we could ever imagine or think. When he rises, the enemy flees in terror. The Lord Sabaoth is the Lord of the angelic armies of heaven. Angels are described in the Bible as fierce and warlike. They have awesome supernatural power. They are astonishing in their countenance to the point where everyone who saw them fell down in fear. The power, their power is revealed repeatedly in the various accounts of scripture. When King Hezekiah prayed earnestly, God sent one angel to defeat 180,000 of the enemy's army. That's the power of one angel. So imagine the power of Lord Sabaoth, who is the commander of the angel armies. Wow. He's the ultimate warrior. Imagine if one angel could do that, what he could do. Wow. Thank you, God. God opened Elisha's eyes at, Elisha, at Elijah's request, and he saw great chariots of fire surrounding them. In 2 Kings, I'll, I'll read the account, 2 Kings 6.15. And when the servant of the man God arose, the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, 
Alas, my master, what shall we do? He's panicked in fear. So he's, he answered, do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. We need to memorize that and say it over and over to ourselves. Those who are with us are more and mightier than those who are with them. <laughs> and Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And then the Lord opened his eyes, the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. We're in the new covenant. That's what we live in. That is our inheritance. We have no need to fear. We have a mighty God with a mighty army ready to defend us. So the angel armies are mighty warriors. The Lord Sabaoth is the ultimate warrior of all mighty warriors. The Lord of heaven's armies is therefore not drafting into his army on earth a fearful, frivolous, complacent people. We are called to this moment of history. We are called to be mighty warriors in the image of our king. Rather, we are an army called to rule in his power and his might and his authority. His army on earth, they are trained and equipped. They become an army sold out to their king who contends and overcomes all obstacles in their path. They are overcoming warriors. The promise in all the, the um, seven letters to the churches is to he who overcomes. We are called to be overcomers and warriors in this battle. God needs his people in this time of history, in this era of war. We are in a, in a, in a very critical hour of history. In the next seven years of this decade is going to be intense. It's a season of war. And we have been called to this. We have been chosen to live in this era of time. We've been called to know him and to magnify him as our great warrior king, Lord Sabaoth, a fierce commander of great might and power whose face is set like flint with determination to annihilate his enemies. In every account in scripture, we see, even though it may have been a matter of timing, he annihilated the enemy, took them out. He's going to do it again. He fights on behalf of his people to defend those who belong to him. He's jealous for his people and for his reward of the great harvest of souls that also belong to him. He is fierce, he's intentional, and he's determined, and he will have his inheritance. He will have his bride. He will have what belongs to him. He's getting ready to move. Can you feel it in your spirit? We're in the middle of a shift. Things are shifting by the end of this year. 2023, watch out. Be ready for it. That's why I'm preaching this message. We are at war. We are in a war season. The Lord is moving to lead the captivity of souls out into freedom. He's going after the captivity. He's going to break open the prison doors. This is an act of war. He's a warrior. When we call for his kingdom to come, this is an act of war, as I've spoken before. When we declare thy will be done, this is an act of war. His first coming to rescue humanity was an act of war. The cross was an act of war. And he's rising now and moving out 
in the sons of God, that's us, in resurrection power to destroy demonic strongholds and to capture the captivity, to capture the harvest. We work together in a dance of unison. The Bible calls the dance of Mahanaim. We, in this dance with Yahweh, Sabaoth, and the angel armies of heaven. So my God, look at the backup we have. Look at who is backing us up. Look at what is surrounding us in this war. The Lord mighty in battle, the Lord dressed in armor for battle, ready to fight for his people. The first occurrence of the name Yahweh Sabaoth, and this is interesting, is in the account of Hannah. Hannah was greatly troubled in her soul because she was barren and um, her husband's other wife kept mocking her and she was full of shame and she was desperate. But I believe that Hannah perceived in her spirit that a child was in her destiny. She knew that somehow that this child was hers and she would have a child, even though she didn't see it. Can we relate to that? Can you feel the birth baby in the womb? We don't see it, but we know it's there. Hallelujah. She perceived that she was in a battle that was more significant than she understood. That something was resisting the birth of this child. She perceived that. The, the scriptures don't say that, but I'm just sensing as a woman, as a mother who has birthed, as a child of God, that we have discernment to recognize there's something more than what we are seeing. And she knew that. In the battle, she believed, in the battle, I believe, sorry, she received a revelation. She got a revelation of Lord Sabaoth. She went to the temple and she laid down and in the deep groaning of prayer and travail, <clears throat> she gets that revelation and she makes her appeal to Lord Sabaoth. That's who she cries to. This is the first mention of his name, Lord Sabaoth, Lord of Heaven's Armies. But she got the revelation <clears throat> and she receives the assurance of her request. She got up and she knew she had received that child. Let's read a bit of that in 1 Samuel 1.11. He says, then she made a vow and she said, oh, Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. So she made a vow to Lord Sabaoth. And she said, you give me this child, I am giving him back to you to serve you as a Nazarite all the days of his life. Can we say that about the babies that, in, that are in our wombs? Lord, let us birth what you have placed there, Lord Sabaoth. Lord, we cry out, Lord Sabaoth. Lord, let, let us give birth as you have ordained, and we will serve you. We will give back to you everything that you have given us. Can you pray that prayer? Well, Hannah prayed that prayer, and she got her answer. Hannah needed the Lord of Heaven's armies to fight for her. She got a revelation of the battle involved and travailed in prayer, crying to the Lord Sabaoth, and she received her answer. Hannah was in battle for a miracle. Believe me, what's in your wombs, and that goes for a man and woman, I, I don't know who's on this call, but what's in your womb is a miracle placed there by God. 
She dedicated her child, Samuel. Samuel was her baby. She dedicates Samuel as a Nazarite, given wholly to Yahweh Sabaoth. She brought him to the temple and left him there. Samuel was a miracle, but he was Samuel was no weak servant. And I saw a movie about Samuel that blew me away because I had this was not the picture of Samuel that I had in my mind. Samuel was a priest who served the Lord ferociously, a warrior prophet, that's who he was, who cut off the head of the Amalekite king with one swipe. That's who Samuel was. So she cries out to the, the ultimate warrior and she births a warrior prophet. Samuel was the prophet who anointed David. Who is David? David became the warrior king, son of David. The Lord Sabaoth was the son of David. So she births a line of warriors. Imagine that. So in the day of battle that we are in, that we have entered into, in the season of war, like Hannah, we must make our appeal to the Lord Sabaoth for answers to our prayers in the days ahead. Lord Sabaoth is rising up for the battle. You know, he has many names. And when we need healing, he is the Lord the, Yahweh Rapha. But in this season of war, he's rising up now as Lord Sabaoth, the, the mighty ultimate warrior dressed for battle. That's who he is. So we must make our appeal to him for answers to our prayers. We are primed, like Hannah, to give significant births for the kingdom of God in this hour. We are primed to give birth to Nazarites, Nazarite churches, Nazarite ministries that are wholly given over to the Lord's purposes. We are birthing Nazarites, wholly given over to the Lord, 100%. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to just switch a little bit to, you know, we're talking about Lord Sabaoth and the appeal. We make our appeal to him. And um, our appeal can be a cry. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> you know, and God put this on my heart too about the cry and the appeal. And uh, I was uh, it. I was just really tickled that um, pastor of the church I, uh, that that I go to now. Um, I was listening to him online and. I wasn't at church last Sunday because I was sick, but he was preaching on the cry and the power of the cry. So it was a confirmation that God is saying something to us in this hour because we're going to have to know how to appeal to heaven and to Lord Sabaoth. We're going to have to know how to cry to birth and travail his will into the earth in the days ahead. So God is waiting to hear our cry, our appeal. So there was a widow who was also contending like Hannah in prayer. And she was in a battle in Luke 18, 3, 8. And it says, now there was a widow in that city. And she came to him saying, get justice for me. Get justice for me. How many of us can say that right now? Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward, get justice for me. but afterward he said within himself, though I do not fear God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she wearies me. Then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out to him day and night? 
though he bears long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Can we all say yes? He will. He will find faith in my heart because we are going to appeal, we are going to cry, but we do so with the understanding of who God is, with the understanding that Lord Sabaoth is our husband who is taking care of his bride, as we read, that the Lord Sabaoth is jealous for us and is going to watch over us and protect us and provide for us and and release our destinies in this earth so that let that faith rise up in you knowing who he is for his people and when we cry out to him we will 100 percent have the answers to our prayers maybe not in our timing but it's coming in his timing but he is faithful so in Luke 18, the woman was persistent in her cry. So we need to continue to appeal and to cry out and to pray and to not give up in the battle. We cannot give up in the midst of the battle. We press in, we continue to pray. When Israel cried out to God persistently, if you read scripture, they always received answers may not in their timing, but God eventually came and delivered them and brought them out into victory. God wants to hear our cry and our strong appeal. Why? Because in the cry, we become real, we become authentic, we become engaged like Hannah and like the widow. You know, we can easily, 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 I've done it, fall into the trap of praying rote prayers because we know how to. We can just rattle it off, just let loose on the enemy. We know how to do it, don't we? And it's words, you know, and we can work ourselves up. And, you know, I'm not saying anything is wrong with that because sometimes that is where you start. And if you're really, really seeking God in, in that place, you know, at some point the anointing is going to kick in and it will become real. But I'm just saying, you know, we can just be, um, it can just be all about words and um, even boasting, you know, in how great we can pray or whatever. It's not about the words. It's about the heart. It's about the heart that touches the heart of God. When you make that connection to the heart of God, something in the spirit happens immediately and something happens. Angels are released, angels are dispatched, you know, and, and they, they're sent out to begin to, to work, to, begin, to bring the answers to our prayers. So it's, it's tapping into the heart of God. And that's the place we want to get into. We don't want to get into just, you know, memorized uh, praying. <clears throat> so we have to become real and authentic with God because he sees our heart. He sees whether we're engaged or not. We're just rattling off something. It doesn't move him. So our cry shows also our stake in the outcome that we have a stake in it with God. We're in partnership with God. We're in this thing together. We're crying with him like Hannah. You know, God wanted Samuel to be born. That was Hannah's destiny, but it was the destiny determined by God, not by Hannah. So we have to have a stake in the outcome with God. You know, there's a message that I preach and I don't have time to preach because it's a whole message. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it next week. It's on Ezekiel 36. But, you know, it, God just lists over and over all the incredible things he wants to do for Israel. You know, he says, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And it's just a miracle after miracle. I'm going to do this for Israel. And then the chapter ends where he says, well, I am going to let Israel 
cry out to me and pray for me to bring this to pass. In effect, that's what he says. So he first determines what he's going to do. And he says, well, Israel has to now rise up and pray for this to happen, what I've said. So we have a part in it with him. We're birthing this thing together. It's like a, two parents, you know, they're in the birth together. The mother and the father are there travailing. The father is not going through what the mother is, but in his spirit and in his heart, he's sweating. You know, he's in it. So God had a part in, in Hannah's birth and in the widow's birth. And we, he's our husband, right? Says that in Isaiah 54, the Lord Sabaoth is your husband. It's his name. <clears throat> so the cry is not something we can work up. It comes out from the travail of our soul. You know, and sometimes God is stays long with us because why? Because he wants us to get us to that place where we will travail in soul. Where it means something to us. And I'm sure every one of you has a testimony that you have come to that place. You just hit the dust and you cry out with all of your being to God in tears. And suddenly something shifts. He's watching. He's watching. He's waiting for that moment when you get real with him. Maybe that's why we're not seeing so much answers to prayer. There's a lot of people praying all over the world for a lot of things. But I don't know, probably I'm wrong. But, pro you know, he maybe he's looking for some real authentic praying. <clears throat> I'm not talking about, you know, I bind you, Satan, in the name of blah, blah, blah. You know, <laughs> we can pray that. But he's looking for something real in the spirit. You know, recently, um, someone, a pastor from Pakistan, asked me to preach the gospel to on his um, television network to thousands of people in Pakistan. And I thought, oh my gosh, I've never preached the gospel, although I know, you know, I love Jesus. I, I don't move in that evangelistic anointing or haven't so far. And I was like thinking, can I preach the gospel? I'm thinking, of course I can preach the gospel. All I have to do is talk about Jesus, how much I love him and how great he is. That's the gospel. So I, after much thought, I said, okay, I will. And he wanted healing too. I'm like, oh dear God, I've never moved in healing, like the healing you know, evangelist. I thought I would just just talk about healing, how he heals. Simple. But before I said yes, you know, I had read a book many, many, many years ago. I think it was called CG and Me. And it was written by, I forget her name now. She was the head of a, a very large ministry for women for, for a long time. I think she recently died. Anyway, that's not important right now but i read her book and uh, god asked her and cg to go to pakistan and this was at the height of the war when they split from india it was a terrible terrible war and um, god asked her to go in the middle of the war and she had been to many places like that and but she said it she prayed and she said, Lord, she, every time God sent her anywhere, she prayed and she, she would say, God, I am not going. I refuse to go unless you put your heart of love and compassion in me for that people or else I cannot go. And so he did. And she went and she did um, uh, incredible work in, in India and in Pakistan. And I felt, you know, I needed that too. I, I've never given any thought to Pakistan. I, I, you know, and I just, I just didn't have that feeling. And I said, Lord, give me your heart for this nation. If you're going to ask me to speak to them. 
And um, I suddenly started to really feel excited about Pakistan and still do. And um, I preached, I preached a word and I, then I called them, I asked them to stand up and I, and I preached healing over all of them. And about two days later, the pastor texted me and he said, 619 people got saved. And a woman who was blind received her sight and a child who could not move his arm was able to move his arm. And I, I just, I just wept. I, I was like, I'd never done this before, but you know what? It's not about me or you or anything or what we've done. It's just a matter of obedience of saying yes, and, and connecting with him in his heart. You know, when, whenever it, in the Bible it says, and, and, and the Lord had compassion on them, then you know everything is ripe for a miracle and a miracle happened. So if we can tap into his heart of compassion for people and pray, we have to ask him for that. It just doesn't come naturally to us or me anyway. I'm just, you know, I'm so distracted with ministry and the things he's called me to do and writing, you know, so if something like that, I'm like, God, you know, help me to understand what you see, how you feel, what, you know, and, and, and partner with you in this. And that happened, my God, a harvest <laughs> was so exciting. I'm like, God, Let's do it again. <laughs> Let's do it again. You know, I'm ready. You send me to Pakistan. I'm ready to go. I want to be an evangelist healer now. <laughs> anyway, we can be anything God wants us to be. So we must join with the Lord in his cry. This is his heart. This is his cry. He's crying for his harvest, his people for the children now in the world. He's crying. Who will join him, he says in his cry. Our spirit and soul must become one with the Lord in his appeal. And then he hears our cry. We join with God in his passion and his desire. We are fulfilling his dreams and his desires he has dreams you think you have dreams you're only tapping into his dream it, even if it's for your life <clears throat> you're tapping into his dream his cries for the harvest his cries for the children my god what's happening to the children you know i, I don't even have to pray for compassion <laughs> or his heart for the children. I cry literally when I think about what's happening to children today. His cry is for the nations. His cry is for Israel, his family. He's crying out and he's rising up as mighty warrior in battle, ready to go to war, ready to go to war. You know, as you know, having me preach to Pakistan, that was him in me, the warrior going to war for this people. So we must ask him, ask him in your prayers, release your compassion, release your heart, release your passion for the people, release your passion for the nations and the situation. Be a woman, a man of passion. Then we can enter his cry. When we truly feel his heart, we can pray in unison with him with the same heart. You know, I think mostly our women are on probably some men, but birth is agony. If you've had a child, birth is agony. It's a cry and it's a travail. It's a honkering down to bring forth something. You know, and I believe you are all, we are all on the edge of the birth for this next season. We have to cry out, you know, I've started, he's given me this revelation of Hannah and the Lord Sabaoth, you know, and I feel the resistance. I feel the warfare in the spirit. You know, it's, I feel as if the enemy armies are saying, stop her, stop her at all costs. <laughs> 
This thing is about to come. Stop her. And, and he's throwing everything he can at me. It's like the woman in, in Revelation 12 where the dragon wants to devour the child. But we have Lord Sabaoth on our side. And we can cry out to him. We can hunker down. And I cried out. I'm like, God, don't let my destiny be robbed by anyone, demon from hell, person, anywhere. Let it come forth. When we truly feel his heart, we will pray with him. In this era and in this decade of war, our cry must be to the Lord Sabaoth. He's sending us forth in his spirit to do his work. The spirit of Yahweh Sabaoth is upon us. You know, and I've read this to, to you know, people who I, I, I've been teaching. You know, I said, find yourself in here. Find yourself in the scriptures. Find yourself in Isaiah 61. The spirit of the Lord Yahweh is upon me. Can you say that boldly? He is upon me. Because Yahweh has anointed me to preach good news. I did it. Hallelujah. <laughs> to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to heal. <laughs> the brokenhearted i didn't i didn't have that part of the scripture wasn't i didn't claim it as mine at all i thought where am i in the scripture i couldn't find myself until further down but there i am at the beginning to proclaim liberty to the captives isn't that exciting and he's giving you keys that you can just go and unlock some prisoners wow and they come out into freedom. Wow. And the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Lord Sabaoth, we are coming into the day of vengeance. We shall, I'm skipping a bit, we shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. This is where we're at. This is that. I keep saying all, every, all the scripture I'm reading now, I'm like, this is that. The blueprint of this end time generation has been pre-coded, pre-loaded into you for battle the warrior code is already in your dna because you are born in this hour of war the warrior code is in your dna you're preloaded and coded with everything you need for the battle the warrior king lives and moves in us just as we live and move in him he lives and moves in us so we must call forth our warrior spirit to the forefront speak to your spirit to, that it should be counted take its place on the forefront the front lines of the battle you know started speaking to my spirit a, a lot i'm saying rise up spirit man for goodness sake take charge of this body this temple rule and reign and subdue this ridiculous soul and flesh that wants to rise up rise up spirit rise up spirit in the name of yahweh sabaoth rise up so we call forth our spirit keep doing it shut that flesh down shut down the soul that wants all the stuff and complaining and all that stuff we are running people of god we are running the gauntlet you know what a gauntlet is we're running the gauntlet and we have to have understanding and we have to have the skills to reach the finish line 
Someone gave me a card once because they saw all the battles that I was constantly in. And it was like a, a, like a cartoon drawing of a man and he had an umbrella and he had weapons and he had all sorts of stuff and he was had a helmet on and he was running and arrows and stones were being thrown at him. <laughs> and he was just running, trying to make it through the gauntlet to the end. Well, I'm sorry to say we are in a gauntlet. Things are going to be thrown at you. Rocks are going to be thrown at you. Arrows fired at you. But that's okay. You have armor. You have armor so that it can just bounce off. So I think I've gone over time and given you maybe too much, but we'll continue on this vein in the next two weeks because this is where we're at. But, you know, it's so there's the Lord showed me I'm, I'm just finishing off my book now on spiritual warfare and I, it's perfect timing because we're, we're beginning seven years of a warfare season. But the Lord showed me like 20 years ago, these two positions of prayer, both are good, both are powerful. And um, it's the cry, the appeal and the petition that's one. Because in those in those positions, we are we are we are engaging God. We are facing God. We are looking to God. We are intensely engaged with God, and we are crying out to Him, and we are praying through like Hannah. But sometimes when we do that, we get a download, we get a, we get a revelation, we get a word, we get, we get that word, that revelation, that download is power, it's a bomb. It is a Holy Ghost bomb, that word, even if it's one word, you know, as you are travailing and, and petitioning and appealing and crying, and you get this, suddenly you get this word, you get this revelation. And, um, and it's, it's, it's your answer. So you can take that word, you can take that revelation and you, and you don't have to physically turn, but in the spirit, you're now turned. You're not engaging the father or, or God anymore. You're standing or seated with him beside him and you are facing the spiritual realms and you release that word with authority as a decree as a declaration as a word of god you send that thing out this is what the god says and you decree it in the name of yahweh sabaoth this is what the mighty god says and you can release that thing with fire and believe me 100 percent is going to blow up the thing the strongholds that are, are hindering you that are preventing you that are stopping whatever is happening in the spirit realm from uh, you receiving breakthrough. So, you know, in all that I'm saying, you can see that you are engaged with God in this place. You know, it's not a light thing where we can just dance around and talk and just throw out prayers. We're engaged in this place and sometimes you know i need to be alone in that we can be get into that place corporately we can if you're with the right people and um, sometimes it takes us a while corporately to get into that place where we hit upon something but definitely on my own i can just you know hunker down close my eyes find god and then and then begin to pray and as i begin to pour out my heart something happens i make the connection with god and something happens hallelujah hallelujah amen and amen well i hope you're all blessed by this and that you receive from it uh keys and tools and weapons ready to go take down some wow demonic strongholds that have risen over the last few decades that are showing their ugly faces right now don't do it in the flesh don't do it in zeal without wisdom do it in the presence of god engaged with him and let him lead and guide you in it 
Otherwise, you might get into trouble. So bless you. And I'm going to say goodbye to Facebook. I hope whoever was listening was blessed and can use this and do something with it. You know, I feel that that is part of my call is to equip, mobilize, raise up a lion face warrior army. And I know I'm intense, you know, um, but I don't know. I don't apologize. You know, I was on a call yesterday and in a group and, you know, everybody was talking and whatever. And my turn came to share, but I wasn't planning on it, but I just got so intense after i'm thinking god am i too intense for them but yes whoever said that i like intense i'm intense god is worthy of intense look at what he did for us he was intense he went on a cross for goodness sake he is an intense passionate god so therefore i will be intense i'm not going to apologize to anybody who doesn't like it that's the way it is so God bless you. Father, I just thank you for this word. I thank you for everyone that's listening and has heard this word, God. Thank you, God, that uh, you are raising up an army now. Lord, I pray for everyone who hears this word that they will recognize that they have the warrior DNA in them, that they have been preloaded and pre-coded for this hour. Lord, chosen to live in this time, it's not by accident lord and that spirit in them will rise up to take their place without fear lord when fear is gone we can do what we have to do with joy and with power and with strength with you beside us god wow we're on an adventure a very you know serious adventure but we are on an adventure nonetheless um and we trust that you are going to be with us by our side lord in every step of the way in this so we bless everyone lord i ask for protection over everyone tonight i pray that you will give them the heart the mind the soul to to become all that you created them to be lord protect their families their homes their cars their their finances lord open up the windows of heaven even right now lord sabo oath we appeal to you, open up the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that we cannot contain it. God, we ask in your holy, precious name. Amen.